What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and having a great day. Today is a beautiful day, especially in the sun. We got blue skies and that is why we are reviewing the 2023 Chevy Bolt EUV Premier. Huge thank you to Felipe Portillo over at Coons Tyson Chevy Buick GMC for allowing me to do this review for you guys today. If you guys are interested in this particular Bolt or any GM product with the exception of Cadillac, I'll be sure to have Felipe's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video first let's talk about the exterior and performance and like i said this is a 2023 chevy bolt euv premiere and this particular one has been painted in silver flare metallic one thing that's really cool about this paint color is that if you take a look at it in the direct sunlight it looks more like an ice blue metallic paint rather than a silver however when you pull it into the shade it looks more like a silver but if you guys want a very easy to take care of paint then I definitely recommend getting the silver flare metallic because you cannot see any swirl marks. But we'll start over here at our headlights, then we'll work our way down and around the side of the Bolt EUV. So like I said, this is a Bolt EUV Premier, and with the Bolt EUV Premier, you do get LED headlights with IntelliBeam. IntelliBeam is automatic high beams, and then up top here is where you'll find your LED daytime running lights. Taking a step over to the left, you can see that the design language of the 2023 Chevy Bolt EUV is very, very simplistic. So there's not really that much going on at the front end. So you have a black bow tie emblem, then you get a black grill surround, and then you get a body color grill. So if you guys get this car in red, this grill down here will also be painted in red. So this is a body color thing. And then at the center of your black grill surround right here is where you'll find your forward facing camera. Your forward facing camera goes along with your 360 degree view camera that comes standard with the Premiere. One thing I wanted to point out is that just below your LED headlights you get a black trim piece but just behind your black trim piece is an air duct so um, that definitely helps out with aerodynamics and helps you get uh, better range with the bolt but you can see I'm not sure if the GoPro will pick it up but you can see light protruding uh, out of the other end and then one thing I wanted to point out is that just behind your LED daytime running lights you have a black trim piece that says bolt EUV which I think is pretty cool the bolt is in black lettering and then just to the right of that you have your charge port opening it up that's what your charge port looks like we'll close that and then just below your charge port is where you'll find your black 17 inch wheels with red stripes so this particular bolt EUV does have the red line appearance package and with the red line appearance package you get these black 17 inch wheels with that red stripe right there these wheels are wrapped in a 21550 Michelin energy saver all season tire you give you guys a look at the tread pattern on that tire here real quick but standing up and I'm gonna move out of the way so you guys can see your black mirror caps with red stripe that red stripe also comes with the red line appearance package but you also get integrated turn signals these mirrors are heated they are manually folding you find your blind spot monitoring right here and you also have blind spot monitoring on your passenger side side view mirror as well and then at the bottom of your side view mirrors is where you'll find your side view camera that side view camera goes along with your 360 degree view camera that I mentioned a little bit earlier you get black window trim with the Bolt Premier, so that is not specific to the Redline appearance package. You do get black window trim standard with the Premier, and then you also do get these silver roof rails standard with the Premier. I know that it looks like body color roof rails, however, they are not. I took a look and I spec'd out a red one, and they were still in this same color. So you get silver roof rails, body color door handles with a chrome strip. So give you guys a closer look, get out of the sun. You can see body color, and then you get that chrome strip, and then you get chrome body side moldings, obviously on both sides. Rear view wheels right there. Body color, shark fin antenna. You got your third brake light. This is your rear view camera mirror. Um, so you can see, now you can see it. Rear view camera mirror, rear view camera mirror washer. So you can see you have your rear view mirror right in there. This is um, the camera for your rear view camera mirror. Like I said, rear view camera mirror washer just to the right of that. Intermittent rear wiper, LED taillights. You get a black trim piece that connects your two LED taillights. Get a black bow tie emblem just below your black bow tie emblem. 
It's where you'll find your rear view camera. And like I said, this does have the Redline appearance package. So what you get with the Redline appearance package are these red and black rear badges. You can see it says Bolt EUV with a mix of red and black. And one thing that I thought was interesting about the Bolt EUV is that your turn signals are actually located down here. So this is your turn signal. And then right here, the rest of this is a reflector. Same thing on this side as well. You get your turn signal and then this side of it is your reflector. And then taking a step back, you have four rear view sensors. So one, two, three, and four. So you get rear park assist. And then right down here is your reverse light. And you can see you get a gray metallic trim piece. One thing that's interesting about the Bolt EUV is that you do not get a power lift gate. It is manually opening. So all you got to do is find this pad down here, lift up on it, and the lift gate will open up. You get a cargo cover. So if thieves want to see what's in your trunk, they cannot see it because this thing is blocking their view, which is a really nice thing. You have a LED light on the left-hand side of your trunk. You get a nice flat storage space uh, in the trunk. And then if you need a little bit more room, all you got to do is lift this thing out of the way. And then this thing goes super, super deep. Um, so tons of storage space, honestly, uh, back here. And I think under here, it feels like you have your tow hook. So that is where you'll find your tow hook. And maybe, just maybe, um, this is where you'll find your rear spare tire. I think you might have to undo that. Um, but yeah. That's about it for back here. Good amount of storage space considering that this is a compact EUV. So yeah, good amount of storage space and it'll fit pretty much what you need. Just keep in mind that obviously this is not a Suburban or a Tahoe. So you do have limited-ish storage space, but I mean, look at the size of the vehicle. But I'm curious to hear what you guys think of the 2023 Chevy Bolt EUV in the comment section down below. It is actually quite a bit cheaper for 2023 than it was in 2022, which I find interesting, but we'll get into that here in a minute. But with that said, let's move into performance. Popping open that hood reveals that 65 kilowatt hour battery pack that makes 200 horsepower and 266 pound feet of torque. It is mated to a direct drive transmission for a zero to 60 time in 6.8 seconds. And if you guys were wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 125 MPG E city, 104 MPG E highway for 115 MPG E combined. And if you guys were wondering about range, you have 247 miles of range. But if you guys are enjoying the video, so far today, please give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm really gunning for 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2022. And I cannot do that without your guys' help. So I greatly appreciate it if you guys would help me get to my goal of 10,000 subscribers by liking and subscribing on this video. But with that out of the way, let's move into the interior. All right, guys, moving into the interior. This is a 2023 model year vehicle after all, so you do get keyless access. All you gotta do is have your key fob in your pocket, walk up to the vehicle, put your finger on this button, and the vehicle will unlock. One thing I wanted to show you guys that I thought was pretty cool that I've never seen on any other EV is that if you lock this and then you press and hold on this button, that will remote start the vehicle. And basically it will precondition the interior. I messed it up a little bit. It will precondition the interior. So it will either turn the heated seats on, it'll turn the heated steering wheel on, it'll heat the interior cabin, or it'll turn the ventilated seats on and we'll turn the air condition on dependent on the ambient exterior temperature. But Let's step into the interior and uh, see what's going on in here. You can hear the interior climate turned on and uh, we're gonna turn the vehicle on and turn it right back off so we can turn that off and we'll take a look at our door panel. So you get some nice leather wrapping on your door panel with some red accent colored stitching. You only get the red accent colored stitching if you do get the red line appearance package. If you do not get the red line appearance package and you only get the Bolt Premier, then you do not get red accent colored stitching. But you get a gray trim piece, aluminum door handle, unlock and lock buttons, power mirror controls. Pressing this button will restrict your passenger window privileges. Automatic up and down front windows, automatic down windows only in the rear. And then obviously you got a spot you can close the door by grabbing onto there. A little bit of miscellaneous storage towards the bottom of the door panel. And you can see you got a Bose sound system. And uh, this particular Bolt Premier does have the $2,495 sun and sound package, which includes a seven speaker Bose sound system. But I'll get into what else comes with that here in a minute. But 
with the Bolt EUV Premier, you do get a power front driver's seat, but you get a manually adjustable front passenger seat. But let's step into the interior. And by the way, the driver's seat is a eight way power adjustable driver's seat. But right over here, this will control the brightness and or dimness of your screen, as well as your backlit buttons. This is your headlight control knob. So right now my headlights are in automatic. If I twist it once to the right, that turns daytime running lights always on. And then if I twist it all the way to the right, that turns my headlights always on. I personally like to keep it in headlights automatic because I think it does a good job um, at turning the headlights on when they need to be, turning them off when they need to be. And then also when I get in and out of the vehicle, I don't have to worry about manually turning my headlights off. So that's a nice feature, but let's close the door. Let's take a listen to the sound that it makes. Listen, it's kind of like a wind gust or something. It's kind of cool. You can hear it. Interesting, but uh, let's fire her up. So all you gotta do, put your foot on the brake and push to start. Make sure you have the key fob in the interior, obviously, otherwise it's not gonna start up, uh, but that should be a given. This is your turn signal lever. So all you gotta do, push down. Let's take a listen to the turn signal. Doesn't sound like any other GM turn signal that I've ever heard. Pressing on this will turn automatic high beams on or off and or IntelliBeam um, because that's also what it's called. Obviously, if you pull back on that, that will turn your high beams on. Uh, you do get a leather wrapped steering wheel that is also heated. One thing that's interesting on most other GM vehicles, you would find your heated steering wheel button right here. However, on this vehicle, it is over here. You do get adaptive cruise control standard with the Premier, and those are your adaptive cruise control settings on the left-hand side of the steering wheel. Then over here on the right-hand side of the steering wheel, this is to speak to the vehicle and or pick up on a phone call. This is to hang up on a phone call. And then these controls right here control your eight inch productivity screen. So we'll go throughout that. Um, so right now I have my digital speedometer readout at the center of the gauge cluster, as well as um, you can see it says W, that means we are facing west. And then that's my speed limit sign, but let's scroll down here. So I got speed limit, um, trip stuff, average speed, tire pressure, timer, driver assistance, back to speed limit and go back over here and we can go up to up top here which brings me into my info stuff, which is what I just went over. We'll go back. You can also bring up um, your music stuff. So I'm gonna have to press okay and continue. So we'll open that up. So right now um, I have my FM stuff as well as if I wanted my Sirius XM and or AM stuff and or Bluetooth phone stuff, that would pop up down here. You can see I'm also controlling the tune of the radio right now. Right now, this is my compass. Go back one more. This is my phone stuff. Go back one more and we'll go into here and you can adjust whatever layout. You want modern, that's modern. You want enhanced, that is enhanced. It, it was in enhanced. Um, so that's what I'm gonna leave it in. And then also you have all your different settings that we're not gonna mess with right now. My favorite screen personally would be the speed limit screen right over here which i think is really cool is your range so you can see we have 32 miles until no charge we have a max of 37 miles um, of charge and then we have a minimum of 26 miles of charge i think that's really cool you got max you got min and then you have really um, what it, the vehicle thinks that you have and then you can see you got home so this is how much charge you need to get home so right now we do not have enough charge to get home that's our odometer on the lower left hand side of the eight inch screen and then you can see how much power i either use or how much power gets regenerative braked back into the battery that lets me know we are ready and p is for park right over here you have your windshield wiper stock so all you gotta do pull back on it that will wash the front windshield if i push forward on that that will wash the rear glass obviously you get push button start so that is what that button does right there but one thing that i think is really cool is that you can control your regenerative brakes um, by this paddle on the left hand side of the steering wheel which i'll show you guys on the driving portion of the review but you gotta press and hold on that and it will regenerative brake harder um without having to have one pedal drive on. So I think that's really cool. So if you guys want instant regenerative braking, boom, pull back on that and then it will instantly regenerative brake harder than it would normally um, if you do not have one pedal drive on, which is kind of interesting. And I can kind of relate this to Porsches where they have that um, instant response button. So basically you press on the button in the Porsche and it puts you directly into Sport Plus mode for like 30 seconds. So I think that's pretty cool. And that's very similar to what you'd find right here. And then behind the steering wheel, you find these little controls. 
So this will go in between your different preset radio stations, whether it's on AM, FM, or Sirius XM, and or this will switch between songs if you're on Bluetooth audio. And then on the right-hand side of the steering wheel, you can see you have two more controls. This is to bring the volume up, as you can hear. And then down here, this is to bring the volume down. So yeah, you can see it's kind of like a flat bottom steering wheel, kind of cool. Black Chevy emblem at the center of it. Let's take a listen to the horn. That's what your horn sounds like. And then we'll move our focus over to here, which is where you'll find your 10.2 inch infotainment with wireless Apple CarPlay as well as wireless Android Auto. So with the Premier, this 10.2 inch infotainment screen is standard. However, like I said, this one does have the $2,495 sun and sound package, which also gives this particular Bolt EUV Premier uh, built-in navigation. So built-in navigation does not come standard, but this one is optioned with it. So this is your volume knob, this is your home button, this is your tuning knob and or um, your little control to go throughout the screen. So you can see I'm controlling the screen with this knob and you can see it highlights stuff in orange when you swipe. So right now we're on phone, we go into users, we go into settings, you can see it highlights this, uh, like the ring around it in orange. Boom, Apple CarPlay, boom, Android Auto. And you can control um, the screen with this button. If you guys wanna go into camera, right now we're on, you can see the orange ring is highlighted around camera. If I click on that, that will open up the cameras. So like I said, you have HD surround vision, which is your 360 degree view camera. And then on this side, it is displaying my forward facing camera. However, when I throw it into reverse, it will pop up my rear view camera, but I'm gonna put it back into park. You can see it all goes away. This is a Wi-Fi hotspot capable vehicle. Um, you can see you get your different apps, My Chevrolet. You can set service appointments, XM. You can bring up your climate control stack up on the screen. So if I press on, boom, climate control. Um, we're gonna have that off though. Then I got my home button. It will bring me back to the home screen. You can see what kind of energy consumption you're using, blah, 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 right there. Pretty cool. And then right over here, that's the time. That's the ambient exterior temperature. That's media, that's phone, that's navigation. And then that is your energy thing uh, right up top there. This is your climate control stack. Like I said, the front seats are heated and ventilated. But one thing that's interesting is that the heated and ventilated function is on the same control switch. So right now, if I push down on that, that brings up my ventilated seats. To turn the ventilated seats on, I gotta push up three times. One, two, three ventilated seats are off. If I want my heated seats on, I gotta push up on that. Boom, heated seats with three levels of adjustability. However, if I want to turn my heated seats back off, I gotta push down. So boom, 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 and my heated seats are off. Same thing for the passenger side seat. And then boom, got my heated steering wheel with one level of adjustability. But like I said, this is your climate control stack. Moving down to here, you have a wireless charging pad. This is your sport mode button. So if I press that, it puts us into sport mode. Press that again, it puts sport mode off. This is traction control on or off. And then right over here is your lane keeping assist on or off. And then here is your um, transmission controls. So push to go into park, pull back to go into reverse, push to go into neutral, pull back to go into drive. We'll throw it back into park. And then right over here, you have the button just behind drive and this is one pedal drive on or off. So we'll click that, one pedal driving is on. We'll click that again, one pedal drive is off and you can see it illuminates it in green when it is on. One pedal driving is basically exactly what it says it is. It's one pedal driving. So you can let further off the accelerator and the vehicle will start braking harder. It's actually regenerative braking when you do that. Um, but it's really cool. If you've never driven um, one thing with one pedal drive, it is actually very, very easy and it makes it like that much easier to drive the vehicle. So when you're in a gas powered vehicle, you gotta bounce between your brake, you gotta bounce between the throttle, brake, throttle, brake, throttle. Whereas with one pedal driving on, it's literally what it says it is. All you gotta do is drive with the accelerator. This is your electronic parking brake. You got two cup holders. You get some accent colored stitching over here in black. Then you have a glove box that is not lockable. However, you can fit your owner's manual, some napkins, some straws and stuff like that. 
Right up top here, like I said, you do get a rear view camera mirror, which is exactly what it says it is. It's a rear view camera projecting on your rear view mirror. And one thing that's really cool about it is that you can adjust the brightness of it. You can adjust the zoom on it, and then you can adjust it up or down. So if you wanna adjust that, all you gotta do, click right here, boom. This is gonna adjust the brightness. So right now we're dimming it. Right now we're brightening it. I like to leave it about right there. Click that again, you can adjust the zoom. So right now we're zoomed all the way out. This is mid ground and then that zoomed in all the way. I personally like it either in mid or all the way zoomed out. And then you can adjust it down, which we're doing right now, adjusting it down, or you can adjust it back up. I personally like to have the, um, like right at the center, which would be like right there. And then those are all the controls. So pretty cool. And then if you get the premiere and you don't like the rear view camera mirror, you can turn it off by flicking that forward. And then it just behaves like a regular um, rear view mirror. So you can see, you can see me, you can see what's going on in the back. So boom, boom, just like a regular rear view mirror. If, you're, if you want the camera, boom, flip that. And now you have the camera on. OnStar stuff up top here, passenger airbag on or off. This is your driver side light. This is your passenger side light. Right now I have this in off. So when I open up the interior door, the lights do not turn on. However, if I have it right there at the center, now when I open up the doors, the interior lights will turn on. And then if I want the dome lights on in the flick of a switch, all I gotta do is press on that. And now they are on. And then right over here, you have your panoramic moonroof controls as well as the power shade controls. So if I press on that, the power shade will close. However, if I push right here, it will open right back up. And like I said, this does have the sun and sound package, which is a $2,495 option. And what you get with the sun and sound package is the seven speaker Bose sound system, as well as built in navigation and that panoramic moonroof. So yeah. And then opening this up, you get a vanity mirror with two vanity lights. Same thing for the passenger vanity mirror with two vanity lights. And then one thing that's cool is that you can set your parking ticket. So if you go into a parking garage, they give you a little ticket, set your ticket right up top there so you don't forget about it. And then when you're leaving the garage, take the ticket, give it to the kiosk, and then you don't have to worry about losing that ticket. You can also set your registration uh, or money or any small paper item like a business card or something like that. But I'm gonna open up the visor, boom. And then let's see if it slides. It's an American vehicle. So boom, of course it slides. But we'll close that. I really like how that slides. And uh, that's your view out of the panoramic roof. These seats are actually pretty dang comfortable. And there are a few features that I did want to read um, that I highlighted personally that come with the Premier. So those features include eight-way power driver seat, heated and ventilated front seats, rain sensing wipers, adaptive cruise control, the 360 degree view camera, the wireless charging pad, remote start, and heated rear seats. I'm gonna go over the sun and sound package again for the millionth time. That is a $2,495 option. That includes the seven speaker Bose sound system, the panoramic roof, and the built-in navigation. Like I mentioned to you guys on the exterior and when we were talking about the door panel, this also has the $495 Redline appearance package, which comes with black interior with red accent colored stitching. You also get black wheels with red accents. You get that red and black rear badge that I pointed out to you guys at the rear end of the vehicle. And then you also do get the red outside mirror stripe that I pointed out to you guys also on the exterior part of the review. And then also I wanna read over some safety and security features that come standard with the Bolt EUV Premier. And those include Chevy Safety Assist, which includes automatic emergency braking, front pedestrian braking, lane keep assist with lane departure warning, following distance indicator, forward collision alert, IntelliBeam, which is your automatic high beams. You also get pedestrian friendly alert, headlamp control automatic on and off, tire pressure monitoring system, lane change alert with side blind zone alert, tire fill alert, HD surround vision, which is your 360 degree view camera, rear view camera mirror, rear park assist, rear cross traffic alert. I also want to read over some connectivity features that this Premier also has standard, and that includes remote vehicle start, that 10.2 inch infotainment with wireless Apple CarPlay, as well as wireless Android Auto. This also has the wireless device charging, like I mentioned, efficiency display screens with programmable charge times, keyless access, and adaptive cruise control. And we might as well talk about the MSRP. So I'm gonna throw the rest of the window sticker on screen right now. 
and let's talk about the MSRP. So the MSRP of this particular 2023 Chevy Bolt EUV Premier is $35,685. I'm interested to hear what you guys think of that in the comment section down below. Um, this is also a lot cheaper than it was in 2022. I believe it's like $6,000 cheaper um, than the 2022 model year. So for 36 k I think you get a steal of a deal considering that this thing would make for a perfect daily driver. You get wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. This thing is nearly fully loaded. And then also, if you guys do want a little bit more more than adaptive cruise control you can also option for super cruise with the premiere which is really sweet so if you guys do want the super cruise package it is a 22 hundred dollar option and it includes hands-free driver assist system uh, for use on compatible roads which i think is really sweet it also comes with an enhanced automatic emergency braking um, so if you guys you know use this thing as a daily driver you drive on highways and you want something kind of like a tesla but for a heck of a lot cheaper i would say take a look at the bolt euv premiere with super cruise because like I said, it's got hands-free driving, which is really sick uh, on a vehicle that only costs about 38K with Super Cruise. But I wanna show you guys what's going on in these rear seats. Like I said, you do get heated outboard rear seats, um, but let's take a look at the door panel. So taking a look at the door panel looks pretty much the exact same as what you would find in the front. You get some red accent colored stitching, which comes with the red line appearance package, automatic down windows only. And then you have your heated seat controls right here. Heated seats are either on or off. You do not get any levels of adjustability. And then you get some miscellaneous storage towards the bottom of the door panel, aluminum door handle. And these are a look at your rear seats. You get the red accent colored stitching, which looks really sweet. And let's step into the interior. So right here, you got a great hook for your dry cleaners. You got an Opu handle as well as a dome light. Same thing on that side as well. Down here, USB-C port, USB-A port. You get a seat back pocket behind the passenger seat only. And then boom, right here, you have a center fold down armrest with two cup holders. It is nicely padded. And uh, let's see, I'm five foot nine. I am adjusted behind myself. I've got plenty of knee room plenty of legroom and just a little bit of headroom. I'd say I probably have, you know, one to two inches more of headroom. So not that much headroom left over. So if you're like 6'3", I don't know how comfortable you would be here in these rear seats. Maybe you could do like an hour drive, but that's about it. But here's a view of those front seats from the rear's point of view. But we've talked about the exterior. We've talked about the performance. Now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior of the Bolt EUV Premier. So I wanna see what this thing's like to drive as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So I'll see you guys in the driver's seat. All right, guys. So I just got to witness that helicopter taking off from the parking lot in which I film at. Maybe I'll do a little overlay of that video right here. Anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. I saw him circling and uh, I didn't, I don't know if I used the video or the clip in which he kept circling around and circling around because it, it uh, kind of distorted the audio so i ended up just retaking a clip i believe but i'm not 100 percent sure anyway i saw him circling i saw him circling and um i thought it was pretty cool and then i saw him go low so i was like he had to have just landed and then as soon as i finished the interior exterior and performance part of the video and i was on my way out he had just started taking off so i thought that was really cool i got to pretty much catch it right in time which was cool um I really like aviation and stuff like that. But anyway, that's besides the point. We are talking about the Bolt EUV. And one thing I wanted to mention right off the bat is this little paddle shifter over here, which is your regen braking button. It is really cool. So I'll show you guys. We're going about 30 miles an hour right now. If I press on this, it will slow me down. I got no feet on the brake and you can see I'm pressing and I'm holding on that and it brings me to a complete stop. So that is really, really cool. And I hope like other manufacturers you know, incorporate something like that onto their EV vehicles. I know there is one pedal drive. However, sometimes, you know, you don't want one pedal drive to be on because it's just, you know, it's it takes a little bit of getting used to. And I, just, I know just for a fact that some of you guys are not going to enjoy one pedal driving because it doesn't drive like a regular, you know, gas powered vehicle. Those of you guys who know EVs know what one pedal driving is. But for those of you guys who don't, I really don't think that you guys are going to enjoy the one pedal driving. However, 
um, I think that this is a really cool thing to kind of get you introduced into the one pedal driving because this basically turns the regenerative braking on high. So it basically brings you to a brake uh, or to a stop quicker than it would if you just let off the accelerator without the one pedal driving on. So that's a really cool thing. So right now, even like all I got to do is hold on to it and it holds me in place. So I think that is really sweet uh, in my personal opinion. So if I let off of it, do I creep? Okay, so you can see I'm not creeping. I don't have a foot on the brake or on the accelerator and we're not creeping forward at all. Um, so we'll pull up here a little bit, see if there's a brake in the traffic, which it doesn't look like there is. So I'll catch up with you guys once traffic has passed. All right, we're good to go. And I want to do an acceleration in normal mode. Okay, so that's what the acceleration is like in normal mode. I want to see if sport mode um, changes anything at all. So I'm going to throw it into sport mode and I'll see if the acceleration is any sharper. Let's see. Oh, 100%. Definitely sharper. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, that they incorporated sport mode on an EV. Basically, it's just greater throttle response. But I still think that it's pretty cool that, you know, when you're driving in just like regular day-to-day -day driving, you don't want something that has like super sharp throttle response. But sometimes, you know, you're listening to your favorite song and you're like, I want to get on it a little bit. All you got to do, throw it into sport mode and then your acceleration is definitely a lot greater than uh, what it is with sport mode being off. And I got no foot on the brake coming up to a stop and I'm just holding on to this paddle right now I got no feet on the brake literally just pulling back on that paddle and you can see that it brings me to a complete stop very gently which is really cool man I actually really like this um, and I'll show you guys one pedal drive here in a second once we get going up again I'll actually I guess I'll turn it on right now one pedal driving is now on um, so you can see I'll be driving literally just with the accelerator um, once the traffic gets going yet again. Um, but right now, I'm literally just going to be driving with the accelerator. So I'll let off the accelerator once we get to like 20 miles an hour. And you guys can see, I let off the accelerator and then it brings me back to a stop. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, and one thing I guess, and I think the answer is yes, the brake lights do turn on. But when I use this paddle, are the brake lights turning on when it's coming to a stop? I think the answer to that is yes. I mean, they have to, right? That's a safety thing. Um, but right now, one pedal driving is on. I'm literally just driving with my foot on the accelerator and no braking. And you can see it starts to slow down even on a downhill. Right now we're on a downhill. And you can see it starts to slow down. That's one pedal drive. So very, very easy to do with one pedal drive. Literally, all you got to do is accelerate and, you know, you just modulate the throttle a little bit harder, I guess you could say, than if you're just driving normally uh, without one pedal driving on. So basically think of one pedal driving on as literally like the more you hit the accelerator, the more that it accelerates and the, you pull off just a little bit, it'll start maintaining speed. I'm going to take my foot totally off the accelerator. I'm not even pressing on the paddle and you can see it starts coming up to a stop. So that is what one pedal driving is for those of you guys who don't know what one pedal driving is. So um, you can see coming up to a stop just using the one pedal drive, no feet on the accelerator uh, or on the brake, excuse me, and no hand on that paddle right there. I think that's an M4. It looks pretty sweet in that satin black wrap. But we're going to do a little acceleration onto the highway once this light turns green. But just that is what one pedal driving is. I wanted to give you guys a little, you know, demo of what one pedal driving does. I think it's pretty cool. And it just takes, you know, a little bit of the effort out of driving a vehicle. So I really like one pedal driving. And I, I just I think that some of you guys will not like one pedal driving because um, it takes a little bit of getting used to. But we'll do a little acceleration here. Um, probably not a zero to 60, but maybe I guess we can get a zero to 60 and nobody's behind us and we'll just mat it in three, two, one. And that's floored. Keep in mind, this is on a downhill surface and that's 60 miles an hour. So pretty cool. You know, it's not the fastest EV in the world, obviously. I mean, this is no comparison to like a Tesla Model S Plaid. The Model S Plaid's got literally 800 more horsepower than this. 
but you know for something that you're going to be using as a daily driver this thing's got more than enough power it's like the perfect size for a daily driver if you guys are going to be driving through town but you also you know live out in the country this is the perfect size because really you can fit your family in the back seats your wife will be happy right here um, you don't have to worry about you know it being too small because it's got more than enough leg room more than enough knee room however if you got kids in the back seats and your kids are like six two six three i don't think they're going to be that comfortable in the rear seats however if, if your kids are under like five foot ten i think they'll be totally comfortable in those back seats when it comes to leg room knee room and headroom um so one pedal driving is on all i'm doing is letting off of the accelerator a little bit and you can see that it breaks back down to um, you know a safe speed which is really sweet I'm not gonna be hitting the brake pedal at all when I come up to this stop over here all I'm gonna be doing is just modulating the throttle letting it off you can see we start coming to a stop starting to let off start coming to a stop and um, if I press that paddle even with the one pedal driving on it even regenerative stops uh, a little bit harder so I think that's pretty sweet we'll do another just mild acceleration right here and it accelerates to 35 40 miles an hour very easily which is really nice you know what i mean like yeah on paper it doesn't seem to have all that much power 200 horsepower 266 pound feet of torque in today's day and age doesn't sound like a whole lot however if you get in and drive this thing and you're going to be daily driving it and you want something that's efficient and just very easy to drive then you know go out and test drive a chevy bolt euv uh, whether it's the lt or the premier uh, i recommend getting the premier because it's really not that much more expensive and it's also a lot cheaper than the 2022 model year so i recommend getting the euv or the bolt euv premier i think it's worth the extra bit of money and like i said it's a lot cheaper than it was last year i believe it's like six thousand dollars cheaper than it was um, for the 2023 model year as opposed to the 2022 model year. And if you can, definitely get the $2,200 Super Cruise package because Super Cruise is literally like the best self-driving on the market at the moment comparing it to tesla or audi i mean i'd say it's pretty much right on par with audi but um yeah definitely get super cruise if you guys just want to take your hands off the steering wheel and let it drive it for yourself otherwise if you guys just get the bolt euv premiere it actually does come with adaptive cruise control as standard so if you guys don't care about super cruise um just keep in mind that the euv premiere does come with adaptive cruise control standard so pretty cool very nice driving experience i love how easy that this thing is to drive i'm not hitting the brake pedal at all just modulating the throttle a little bit and it comes to a complete stop if i want it to stop a little bit harder i just push on this paddle and it will regenerative brake stop even harder and it will send all the power that it captured back to the battery pack so pretty cool and uh you know i'm not usually the biggest fan of ev vehicles uh, just because they don't make a lot of sound but if you're gonna be using this as a daily driver and not like as a sports car or something like that then it's a great daily driver i mean it really does make for a great daily driver um you know yeah it doesn't have the most amount of range being 247 miles of range but if you don't live that far away from work it makes for a great daily driver it's very easy to drive um, very small so it's very easy to park you get this 10.2 inch infotainment with wireless apple carplay and android auto you get tons of features standard with it. it's tons of safety features standard so i think it makes for a great daily driver so if you guys are interested go out and test drive one i recommend test driving one and if you guys want something um, that looks good the paint color wise and also is just very very easy to maintain get the silver flare metallic you guys will not be disappointed but that's it for today's video guys if you guys did enjoy the video please give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button and leave a comment in the comment section down below and let me know what you guys thought of the 2023 bolt euv premiere but I'm also gunning for 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2022, and I cannot do that without your guys' help. So I greatly appreciate it if you guys would hit that subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up. But with all that said, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.